So thank you everyone for joining. So I'm going to be presenting with, uh, together with Lionel. Oh, that was really fast, no? Can we come back to the... That was not, that was not 15 seconds. Okay, <laughs> so th thanks again. So I'm going to be presenting, as I mentioned, with, uh, with Lionel, some of the use cases in which BPM and blockchain can work together. And I'm going to start by just uh, uh, remind how blockchain works for everyone. Uh, so basically, in the, in the application uh, that I'm going to show, uh, we're going to have like uh, an application A that is going to be transferring some money to B. That's what I want to illustrate. So uh, uh, for that, we have a transaction that is going to be encapsulated in what blockchain calls a block. This block is going to be broadcasted to the network before approval, uh, and then only after that, the money is going to be transferred into B. It's kind of the easy use case, right? Uh, there are plenty of benefits about using a distributed database like a, a blockchain, like, for example, virtual continuity of your applications or transparency and immutability of your uh, transactions. But of course, this is a young technology, so there are some limitations and challenges. So some of them could be like regulation, especially reporting. Uh, uh, another limitation could be in terms of privacy, as every data is distributed uh, into the different nodes, or adoption, beyond technology, so we're still missing some tools, especially for developers, right? Um, uh, there are some uh, things like private blockchains that can solve some of those limitations, which is pr basically private deployments of blockchains in which uh, you can limit the number of nodes, you can add privacy to some of the data access, you can also implement public auditability. So there are more and more solutions for those challenges. Uh, I, we really think that uh, BPM bring a lot of value to blockchain, especially in situations in which you have solutions in which different parties, different organizations need to work together. This is where the two work pretty well together. Um, so um, the real the benefit that we are seeing about integrating the two are, will be those three, allowing multiple partners in a, to, to join a common process. Uh, it's about customer engagement, so improving the customer engagement, and it's going to be about providing an end-to-end -end traceability to the whole process. So I'm going to spend some time with each one of them. So about trusting the common process, what about encapsulating all the business logic, allowing different partners to work together in a process? That's kind of complementary approach to native capabilities of blockchain like smart contracts. Uh, if we move to uh, the customer engagement, uh, you know, the idea here is to say, okay, when you have different parties, you probably have different applications, so what about pr proposing to, those, uh, to the blockchain developers, a platform to build those dedicated UIs and dedicated applications for each one of those parties. That's even more important than traditional applications. And last but not least, end-to-end -end traceability. We suggest to use the out-of-the-box BPM traceability capabilities together with some native blockchain functionalities like digital signature and monitoring of transactions. So what we're, what we're gonna be covering today uh, is a car order management uh, solution in which basically we have five different parties four companies, uh, and we're going to have, from a business process perspective, four major milestones. Of course, for the purpose of today's demo, we're going to be focusing on one of those milestones. It's going to be the payment transaction. And what we wanted to illustrate here is how two different entities can work on a one business transaction that is going to be the payment of, of a car. That's what we're going to show in the, in the demo. So uh, in terms of the integration, we are using here two uh, open source products, Bonita BPM, of course and also Chain.com. So Bonita BPM is going to be about uh, the business process and the applications on top. And Chain.com is going to be to deploy a private blockchain implementation. Uh, so if we look to the architecture of that, we have at the bottom the blockchain, the private blockchain implementation with the different cores for every party. We have on the top the business logic of the processes. And then still on the top, we have the dedicated applications. So the applications, the different parties, the different companies are going to interact with the process. In terms of the data model, uh, we're going to use the default data model of uh, blockchain, so assets, accounts, and transactions. Note that some of those data are global and some other are local. Uh, so what we're going to see here in the demo is uh, we're going to have two different cores of the blockchain implementation. Basically, here to exchange some money and some assets. In that case, the asset is going to be a car. So everything is going to start with the first core, what they call the core company. It's going to be the one selling the car. It's going to basically spend one car and in exchange, it's going to receive some money. Uh, for that to be done, it's going to uh, uh, build what we call a partial transaction. Lionel is going to talk about that. So when that is done, we're going to have the second core. The core is going to be representing a customer. And what it's going to do is like, uh, it's going to, of course, receive the car, and in exchange, it's going to pay the 50K dollars. Uh, what's happened after that here in blockchain is that uh, we're going to sign this transaction and broadcast this transaction to the, to the network. Uh, so the, exactly the same use case can be uh, enhance using BPM. What about abstracting all the business logic with a process? What about providing the right actions to the different parties? And what about providing the right user interface and dedicated applications to each one 
of the participants of different companies in, a, uh, in this scenario. So that's exactly what uh, Lionel is going to demonstrate. Uh, so we're going to be focusing on this key uh, transaction that we call the payment transaction. And I think that you are also going to share some of the feedback and some of the lessons learned uh, in using blockchain. Leo. Thanks, Miguel, for the presentation. So um, basically, first, I'd like to show you the different components that we're going to use for the demo. And then uh, details a little bit more about how we integrate exactly the business platform with the, the blockchain. And then finally, uh, run through uh, this uh, payment transaction. So if you remember the architecture, we have first two business applications. So they are built on top of, of Bonita. Here you are looking at uh, the uh, customer portal used by our customer, uh, John Doe. So it's basically a business application where you can uh, order a new car and it can review the status of the uh, ongoing order. We have another uh, business application that probably have to connect um, again. Uh, so that's the car company portal where uh, the store manager, the production chain manager will be able to connect and review uh, the task they have to do uh, in that supply chain management. So right now, the store manager has uh, an order from John Doe uh, sitting in his uh, pending task list and basically is ready to notify uh, John Doe for the availability of the car and uh, process uh, to the payment. So we can see information about the car and uh, he can click on the button to process the payment. Before we do, uh, we do that, I'm gonna continue presenting the different elements of the solution. So those two business applications are uh, using a um, common process. So here we are looking at the Bonita Studio where we design uh, the process basically that power those business applications. So here, as I said, we have this task notify for availability uh, sitting on the store manager uh, task list. When you're gonna submit it, it will go through um, the preparation of the payments and then a task will be um, submit to uh, John Doe so you can review the payment and confirm uh, the transaction. Finally, that process is gonna integrate with uh, the private blockchain. So I have on my machine running a private blockchain with four cores. Three of them are running on the uh, virtual box and they are all powered by Docker image and one of them is running on my uh, local machine. Uh, we are using chain core uh, as Miguel described and, uh, each, and with that technology, each single core come with its own uh, web dashboard. So that's what we are looking at right now. Um, so if I connect to this one, basically, this is the uh, core that manage uh, the customer accounts. So basically, if I go under the account list, I can see I have two accounts, Jan Replay and John Doe, uh, and I can see more details about, by example, my John Doe account. Um, and what is interesting here is to see uh, the balance so basically, uh, any account in the blockchain uh, will own a number of units of specific assets, basically, so that's pretty generic. Uh, here we can see that John Doe has 220,000 uh, units of this specific asset, so that doesn't really uh, speak uh, to anyone. But if you want to look at what is behind this asset ID, I can go on the asset list and review the detail for the specific assets. And it's basically what we use to represent the US dollar uh, on our blockchain. So we basically have $220,000 available to make transaction with uh, other parties uh, in a blockchain. Um, second um, blockchain that I have is uh, the car company core. So it's right there and that one manage uh, the account for the Bonita store and the Bonita production. So basically the transaction is gonna happen between the car company core and the um, customer account core. So how do we do that? Uh, we integrate uh, the process with um, this uh, blockchain using uh, the notion of connectors in Bonita, so uh, if I click on this task, the prepare payments, uh, it's a service task that will be executed automatically when uh, the process uh, reaches it. 
And here, we're going to execute uh, a connector. So for the purpose of the demo, we actually implemented a set of connectors uh, that allow us to perform uh, basic action, basically, uh, against uh, the blockchain network. So here, you can see we have uh, about 10 uh, different connectors that we implemented to uh, realize the uh, full uh, supply chain management. So let's focus on two of them. The first one is uh, to create that parcel transaction that uh, Ms. M Miguel described uh, during the presentation. So to do that, uh, we first gonna um, connect to the car company core and basically describe for uh, the Bonita store account what we want to spend, what we expect to receive, and we can assign uh, the transaction. So it, so it's basically uh, some sort of contract. We're going to say, here's what I want to, to spend. Here's how, what, what I expect to receive. Uh, I sign the transaction. And also, uh, I can add some reference data for the transaction. So it's arbitrary information. Uh, in, our care, in our case, we just add uh, identification number for uh, the car that is uh, being uh, traded. And in return, from the uh, blockchain core, we will get what we call the parcel transaction, and we store that as a uh, process data. So the parcel transaction is nothing less than just a ex uh, X encoded uh, string representation of, uh, of the transaction. Then we come here on a confirm payment uh, task for John Doe, so you can review tr the transaction. And then when you submit it, another connector will be executed. And this time is to complete uh, that transaction. So this time we connect to the customer account core on our blockchain. And we use as base transaction the parcel transaction that we uh, create uh, previously. And again, we describe for John Doe account what you want to spend, what you expect to receive, and it's signed the transaction. So basically here it's gonna say, I want to spend $50,000, I expect to receive one car of a specific kind. It will sign the transaction, it will submit it to the, um, to the blockchain. The blockchain will replicate that transaction to each single core uh, within the network. The network will process it, and if it's validated by the, by the network, the accounts will be modified uh, accordingly. Um, we, as a result, we can uh, store the response uh, from the blockchain. So if anything goes wrong, we can actually uh, make take action on the on the BPM part. We can go to a different pass in case anything uh, went wrong uh, during the transaction. Or if, by example, John Doe uh, didn't have the funds required to pay for the car, uh, the blockchain will reject the transaction and we can um, take an action on it. Um, I'm gonna show you quickly uh, where the magic happened, basically. So here we are looking at the Java code of uh, the second connector. So basically, we are using uh, SDK provided by uh, Chaincom, so it's a Java SDK that connect uh, through HTTP API to our, uh, uh, to, a, to, um, to a core within a blockchain network. And uh, using that API, we, we're gonna be able to retrieve uh, the key to sign the transaction. We're gonna build the output and input part of the transaction, add any reference data that we want, uh, build the transaction, sign it, submit it to the, to the, to the network uh, grab the, uh, the answer from uh, the blockchain network and return it to uh, the caller. So that connector is completely generic. We can reuse it um, um, if we want in other processes by just uh, changing the input uh, that pro pro we provide to it. So ne now let's Step back a little bit and um, see how uh, it looks like from a user perspective. So I'm connected as store manager uh, on the car company portal and I want to process with the payment of this Bonita white car. So I'm gonna click on process to payments. Now uh, the process moves to prepare payment transaction. The parcel transaction has been generated and a task is should now sit uh, to my uh, John Doe uh, customer portal 
uh, order list. So that's this second uh, order, basically. So I can see the details of it. Uh, at least that is waiting for payments. I can review uh, the details of it. And I can submit the payment. Now, if, if everything went well, I should see a transaction uh, right here. Maybe not. Hmm, that's interesting. So has any demo sometimes we have uh, hiccups in the demo. So it looked like the transaction didn't went through. Um, In here, mm, I can try. Yes, basically, um, basically, here I did another test um, before that where I uh, exchange uh, one car from John Doe account uh, against eighty thousand dollars. So that's what the transaction should uh, should look like when everything uh, works correctly. Um, but that that's how it should look like. And any calls basically uh, in the private chain blockchain network will get the same uh, transaction field. Um, before we open to question, I'd like just to share a little bit of my experience uh, working on this uh, on this demo. Um, deploying a private blockchain network uh, in my laptop was pretty easy. Integrating it with the pro with a BPM platform, writing Java connectors was fairly easy using the documentation provided by Chaincom. What was more complex is was really to understand the blockchain concepts, uh, understand um, what does that mean to work with uh, a blockchain layer? Uh, how do you uh, make transactions between different cores? What uh, core can see um, what? And um, it's, it's fairly different than just working with a database where um, you basically can edit any state of your data at any point in time. You can delete data um, and so on. When we, you work with a, with a blockchain, you always add data. A blockchain is always moving forward. You always add data on top of data. Um, and I found, that, uh, I found that as a common point with BPM. Uh, BPM, you start from a start event, and then you always move forward. Uh, when you're done a task, you cannot really come back and undo what you have done. And, um, and that, command was really, that command point was really interesting um, uh, for me. And, and, and thinking about it, it, it actually makes sense now that uh, all the blockchain applications that we, we see today uh, rising up uh, are really process-based applications. Uh, today, we see trading platforms uh, built on blockchain network. We see digital voting platform based on blockchain technology. Uh, we see loan management, financial trading, and so on. And all those uh, blockchain applications rely a lot on, on processes. Um, and that's why I think uh, BPM uh, will really uh, help with the blockchain uh, adoption here. Thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm.